Welcome back. So finally, we've reached the point of comparing the effectiveness of each of the metrics studied side by side. So let's take a look. So I've undertaken the same process for each of the performance metrics by looking at the correlation between the performance metrics value in the optimization versus the R value against the equity curve in the walk forward phase and doing that based on a ranked R value. And in this table, we see the results. So I guess the first thing you're going to be interested in is the winning metric, which in this particular case is the compound annual growth rate over the mean drawdown. Now, I'm quite happy about that because this has been one of my preferred metrics for some time. One of the things that did surprise me, however, is how well the profit factor metrics did. So these were a very close second and third, with the normalized version coming out just in front of the standard version. So I was slightly surprised there wasn't a bigger difference there, but as I say, this is on just one optimization, so there's plenty of scope in the future to get more accuracy around this. Next in the table come the R and R squared metrics. Now, as I've said before, on a ranking basis, there is absolutely no difference between these two metrics. And you can see that by the fact that they've both got exactly the same score. Then below that, we've got three of the more standard metrics, the expected payoff, sharp ratio, and recovery factor, all not faring very well at all. But this last one really did surprise me. I expected the compound annual growth rate over the maximum drawdown to perform much better than it did. And I did actually expect it to be fairly close to the mean drawdown version, but that is not the case, not in this instance anyway. So this really does show what a big difference the use of the mean drawdown makes as opposed to the maximum drawdown. So there you have it. Some of this, as I say, was expected and some of it was a little bit of a surprise to me. Now, as I explained before, there is more work to do. This research study did two things. It helped me to formulate a process or a technique in order to measure the effectiveness of performance metrics. Secondly, it allowed me to use that process to determine which metrics were best for the optimization process I used. However, again, those that have seen my previous videos know that I'm slightly obsessed by statistical significance. Relying on the results of a single optimization, therefore, although providing a valuable insight, might not be as reliable as we'd like. And so what I will be doing from this point forwards is every time I perform a new optimization, I'll repeat this process. And then over time, I'll get more and more confidence about which performance metrics genuinely are the most effective. But again, a quick request to you. Are any of you out there statisticians or researchers? If so, do you think you have any ideas of a better technique to use to determine the best metrics, better than the one I've explained today? If you are, and you do, then please feed back in the comments below. Because if there is a better technique I can use in the future, then of course I'd love to actually use that. Okay, so I hope that you found that useful. I might from time to time provide an update of any new results that come out of this, so I'm sure you haven't heard the last of it. Thanks for watching. Please share if you found it useful. Let's get those viewing numbers up, and then until next time, trade safe.